Chairman, before we before we have our little election here, mm -hmm. could you explain just briefly two things? First, what is the procedure that we're going to follow? And if, could you describe briefly what are the duties of the Chairman and the Vice Chair? Because I wasn't here last year for this part of it, mm -hmm. and if you could just explain how it's going to work, and then what your duties are briefly. I think Please. that's a great idea, but I'd like to, in the second portion, I'd like to expand it as a discussion for the whole committee in terms of the duties. You, know, you, you decide the protocol, of course, of the meeting, which is the chair. But uh, in terms of the duties of the various offices, I'd like to have a discussion about that. I think it would be healthy for all of us. Well, let me answer the first question, because that one's easier than the second one. Okay. Because we cannot have, and that is cannot, that will not, have a secret ballot. Our ballot is open, and our process has been to nominate one person at a time, as we would any motion. And from that standpoint, should that motion fail, move on to someone else. I have no problem if all of presentations the candidates have put out at one time as a fair process so that you'll know who is being you know put out for chair or vice chair and then take a vote so I leave that option up to you tonight especially since we are in a situation where it has to be an open vote okay. thank you mm -hmm. And the, uh, the duties, I think uh, we'd all be doing well if we could discuss them, uh, the duties of the chair and consequently the vice chair, if for no other reason that we're all on the same page in terms of our expectations, in fairness to whoever is the chair. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And you might describe just some of the things that you normally do, is because you've been the chair for a few years, so you're probably more familiar with the actual workings than but anybody else. Happening? Yeah. For the sake of order on this committee, and it's, this is a very large committee, the largest committee in town. The chairman oversees all the scheduling. Okay. In recent years, at these organizational meetings, we have put it in the hands of the chairman to be the spokesperson for the entire committee because we are so large. That doesn't take anything away from any of you as a citizen or as a member of this committee. Mary Louise would always say it's hard to put a paper bag over your head. However, uh, from an official standpoint in dealing with any of the department heads or with the town manager, it has flowed through this through the chair. At times, we have broken into subcommittees that have tackled maybe singular problems but still report back to the chair and, and back to committee here. Um, it is the chair's job to maintain order, to make sure that your financials, your documentation gets to you in a timely manner, and basically have a remedy that for anything that might fall apart. And That's the biggest part, I think, sometimes, and we had a year like create that. Create the agenda. Create the agenda, exactly. Create the agenda, preside over the meetings keep a sense of order and balance. Keep order. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a, that's a pretty good... Uh, so I've got seven things here that I just wrote down, and I, I think that gives me a pretty good idea. Thank you very much. Is there I anything? I have six. I have seven. That's because you made two out of one. I bet it was maintain order and preside over meetings, which I have as one line, So, but otherwise I'm sure we agree. Okay. I didn't have any particular problem with Anybody what you said. Anybody want to add anything to leave anything out? Uh, well, I think that something is very important that, uh, like we had on the Board of Selectmen, the chairman cannot do anything without the total approval of the committee, period. So whatever you, whoever you decide to elect as chairman, has such as the agenda, such as running the meeting and all that sort of thing. It's all up to the committee to give that person that responsibility. In other words, it's a democracy at its purest and its finest. And for example, historically, I remember one example before I got on the budget committee the first time, the, the 
chairman that had been the chairman before got relieved because that person had done something that didn't get approval of the committee. That person had communicated without asking the committee first with a, another party. And that was not proper because the committee hadn't decided to vote on it or even consider it. Mm -hmm. So I think that we have to make sure that we all understand that whatever you give the chairman permission to do by your collective wisdom and voting, that's what the chairman can do and nothing else. Okay. And Michael, thank you for that. That goes back a number of years. You sure? And sure in that. recent years, we start out this organizational meeting by, suggest by saying just that. We've said anything that the chair would carry forward, we would take up in committee first. And that's part of our minutes, I believe, from last year as well and the year before. I forget how many years I went back with that. But in other words, we, we don't have any rogues on this board. What, whoever the chairman is represents the committee, and the committee is fully aware of what that action is that that chairman is taking or who that chairman is interacting with at that point in time. A couple of things that we kind of glossed right over, but I think they're kind of important. You do need knowledge of the RSAs as they pertain to the Budget Committee. And you do need to monitor at all times and respect RSA 91A, right to know law. Because we are such a large board or large committee, it's, some, it, it's one of those things that it's an all or nothing. You, you can't cross a line with that because it can get away with you without you even knowing about it. We've had other boards, as a matter of fact, who have used us as a model in recent years, and I'm proud of that, have come to us and said, how do you deal with this and how do you deal with that um, with the right to know law? And um, we'll actually, after we get through with the election and further on in the meeting, we'll talk maybe a little bit more than that as far as procedurally what will be expected of all of us in the coming year. But I think it's very important that whoever is chairman realizes that that that's your obligation. You've taken an oath to uphold those things. And that's your main duty, bar not on RSA 91, in combination, the RSAs come first. I'm not, I'm not real familiar with the details of the situation that Mike was describing that you know so well. Um, mm -hmm. But my, my, my guess is, speak, trying to speak generically about it, my guess is that something from a past chairman was said as representing the committee without the committee having made a majority uh, opinion on the matter. That's just a guess. I can help you out on that if you would. You know, I actually. Um, excuse me, Miss Madam Chairman. It was written documentation. What was written documentation? That got that yeah, person yeah. relieved. Before we go off track on that, mm -hmm. it's probably a decade ago or close to it at this point. All over a decade. Mm -hmm. Right. I see no point in even discussing it tonight. Well, I think it, it, it brought up it brought up a situation that was remedied in years later. Mm -hmm. We're out. We're here tonight to move on. Right. Yep. I think in the, right. in the written documentation is what I'm saying. Whether it was written or oral, there was a, a, there was a representation that the committee had position X without the committee having expressed the majority opinion on X. Mm -hmm. and, All I can and, tell and, the bottom and, line and, and, is and there was a remedy. I don't want to go back in exactly. past history. I exactly. just want to I just want to point out that uh, we as a committee can expect whoever the chairman will be that that won't happen. That if there is an expression of an opinion of this committee that is the result of this committee having a majority vote in that opinion, right? Uh, that's, I mean, we're okay with that, right? And with your permission, uh, Madam Chairman, I will write these out and, and make copies for everybody here, and then we can add to that list as the time goes by this year, so we'll have some procedures that we can follow and you know, I, think well, I, think, I think we've level set. I think everyone seems to be in agreement on, yeah. on yeah, so that's yeah. great. That's I'll, I'll great. Make, I think that's your a good start for this year. I really okay. do. I'll make a, a copy for the next meeting. I'll have this for everybody. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. So if we're, that satisfies my question. If we're ready for the nominations. I would I, have one yeah. question before okay, we get ahead. into that. Mm -hmm. uh, would it be appropriate for the committee through the chair to spend some time discussing time management of the meetings going forward so that we might come to some consens consensus? I think that's an excellent idea as we start to prepare next year's calendar based on a little bit of reflection to Bob on what this year brought us 
because this year was an anomaly as far as schedules went and things that could happen and go bump in the night. So I think that that's an excellent suggestion. Um, I think that speaks to kind of like boundaries or maybe even rules, to use perhaps a slightly harsher word. I think the committee is empowered by nature to create those rules, and the chairman would thus be enforcing them. I think that's implicit. Uh, am I off, off base on that? No, my feeling is at some point if we could create, create some rules of yeah. the road, mm -hmm. we would agree to them, which would empower the chair to enforce them. Right. I, I'm 100% in support of that. Okay. I thought I was expressing that support, <laughs> just in a different way. Having been the chair, I'm the first to agree with you. Mm -hmm. Because if they're made by all of you and mm -hmm. made together, whoever is sitting in the chair does have a little bit more strength because it's coming from you. Right. We have a common expectation. And sometimes and when great. there's that void and somebody has to make a decision, it's not o it's not always friendly or it's not always a we're never all going to agree on everything all right but as long as we can have a sense of consensus on how to run things and have a sense of order i think this election wants to see that i think people voted in a way that they want to see order and they want to see us move on mm -hmm. and i think this is a good start i think the rules is what will be coming a little bit later maybe in the meeting we can have room for that discussion a little later yeah. <coughs> You know what, rather than uh, talk hypothetically, why don't we, we can get right into the meat and the potatoes once we get this election going. Mm -hmm. And my question for everyone is, would you prefer to have the candidates all out there so that you know ahead of time before you vote? My preference is that there be a call for nominations. And all the nominations have been made, <coughs> that each, if there's more than one nominee, then each nominee ought to be able to have some time to describe, you know, the kind of leadership they provide as the chair or vice chair as the case may be mm -hmm. and um, then a vote all right everybody anybody not in agreement with that I'm fine with it Sonny Michael Brian Good. Richard okay all right we're all in agreement <coughs> on that 